Welcome to this presentation, What is Dementia? My name is Rhiannon Thorne. Today's presentation will help you understand what is dementia and how to support people who have dementia. Dementia is an umbrella term to describe a number of conditions of the brain. There are many types of dementia, like Alzheimer's disease or vascular dementia. They will come under that umbrella heading of dementia. There are over a hundred different types of dementia. In this presentation, we will look at the most common types. Dementia is not a natural part of ageing. It doesn't just affect older people. We all forget a name or a face or where we've parked the car, especially as we get older. But dementia is something different. It has an impact on everyday independence. It can affect personality, skills, social functioning, activities of daily living, reasoning, memory and communication. Personality changes might be where someone who's normally very placid is now very angry all the time. They might start to use strong language which they never would have used before. They might become sexualised towards people which is very different to their previous behaviour. They may become more suspicious or make accusations or become less trusting. Skills they might lose the skill to play a musical instrument, speak another language, play sports or ride a bike. Social skills would include perhaps not being able to talk to people or know what to talk about or when to talk, how to have empathy with other people, how to stand close to people and when not to stand close to people, how to recognise and they might lose the skill of using different technologies to keep in touch. Activities of daily living include cooking, getting dressed, keeping yourself or your house clean, being able to pay the bills, but also be able to care for others, including children or a loved one. Reasoning, memory and communication. Being able to understand the world around them, remembering recent events. They might lose speech or be able to understand speech. Dementia is caused by a disease of the brain. Dementia involves a persistent, global, progressive deterioration of all brain function. Persistent means that it will not go away. Dementia is a terminal illness. Global, it can affect any part of the brain. And it is a progressive disease, so it will affect more parts of the brain as the disease process goes along. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia. This is where the chemistry or structure of the brain changes and there are death of the brain cells. The decline is gradual and over a long period of time. Very often people are unaware that they have Alzheimer's disease until the disease has progressed further. Vascular dementia. This is where people will have a series of small strokes and the oxygen supply to the brain will fail. These may, this means that the, this part of the brain will die off. This can be a stepped approach to dementia. So where Alzheimer's is a very slow decline, vascular dementia is stepped. The person will um, have a small stroke and they will dip and then they'll level out and then they'll have another dip and then they'll level out. So it's a stepped approach to the disease process. Pick's disease and frontal temporal dementia. This damage is focused on the front part of the brain. This is where your personality and your uh, executive functioning and your planning is there. So that is affected more than other types of dementia. Because there are different reasons why people will have dementia, some people will have more than one type. So a person might have Alzheimer's disease with that slow decline. Some people may have vascular dementia as well with that stepped decline. When most people hear the word dementia, they think of memory loss. And very often it does start a short-term memory loss, but there are other impacts. Memory are short-term and long-term memories. 
and how they are stored is different. If you think of memories as a book stored in a bookcase, that can help to understand how short-term and long-term memories are stored. If you think of memories as an event and that memory is stored in a book, in a bookshelf, those books start at the bottom shelf and start to work up the shelves as your life progresses on. So you now have books stored to the top of your bookshelf. But this bookshelf is made of flimsy wood and when dementia starts and your bookcase starts to shake, those books start to fall off and they can fall off quite quickly. If you think of memories as feelings and emotions, those are also stored in a separate bookcase and those are built up again from the bottom working to the top. But this bookcase is made of much sturdier wood. So when dementia starts and that shaking starts, those books remain and remain longer than the memories you have around events. So those feelings and emotions will still be there even though you might not remember the event. So you might have gone over the park with your daughter for a walk. In the afternoon later you might forget that you've been for that walk or forget who your daughter is. But you will still have that feeling of um, exercising, being out, fresh air, happiness, being with someone that you love. If you lose your short-term memories, new learning can be difficult. So don't expect people to remember your name and you can help them by saying your name and introduce yourself every time. Accusations can sometimes be made by people with dementia. It's human nature for us to blame people when we lose things and if we are forgetful we might forget where we've put things. You can help the person with dementia by helping them look for the item, check and see if they can find it together. But always check with a member of staff and report if items have actually gone missing. Hiding possessions. If you're fearful that people are taking items, then you might start to hide those items. They might start then to make accusations. You can help by understanding where people normally hide their things and help them again to look for those items. People will often repeat actions or repeat conversations. When people are repeating conversations, treat every conversation as a new one. Be patient and be interested in what they are saying. The way that we interpret the world around us can be impacted upon. People can become disorientated, time, seasons, places and people. You can help by reminding people who you are, introduce yourself, what time of day it is, what you will be doing with them, what the season is, is it a sunny day so it's summer. Make sure people know where they are and what time it is and the season. Recognition problems. People might find it difficult to recognise objects, places, people. Imagine that you sit down at a table to eat your lunch. You have a knife, fork and a spoon in front of you. But you can't recognise what's the knife, what's the fork or what's the spoon. They all look the same. As you look around, people are eating their lunch and enjoying their food. But you don't know how to or how to get started in eating your meal. How would you feel if someone came and took over or laughed at you because you didn't know which was the fork, the knife or the spoon? Reassure people, um, they don't very often like to be told that they're wrong, so don't use words that are blaming or shaming. Have empathy and support people when they're ready to be supported. People may have hallucinations, they might see or hear things that are not there. If they're distressed, reassure them. If not distressed, then do not correct the person. They may also have delusions, false beliefs such as my food is being poisoned or people are out to get me. Again, reassure people if they're distressed. 
Do not take things personally. Try another member of staff for support. It might be that they recognise you as somebody that they didn't like from a previous experience. Changes in personality can be very difficult for family members and friends. This is not the man I married or my father would never have done that. People can act very differently and out of character. They may have disinhibitions, sexual disinhibitions, toileting, they might have rude table manners, they might pick food off other people's plates, or they might scrape food that they don't like onto somebody else's plate. They might use language that is inappropriate. They may also have poor emotional control, they might lose their temper or become distressed quite quickly. You just need to be patient. Do not take things personally. The person with dementia does not have control over the behaviours or actions. They're managing as best as they can as the disease progresses. Try not to show shock or disgust. And if you have concerns over behaviours, especially sexual behaviours, discuss this with an experienced member of staff. They will be able to support you. People with dementia can also have problems with planning and organisational problems. Imagine the planning of trying to cook a simple meal. What foods go together, when to start cooking, what times, how you can cook, what foods you like, what foods other people like. This all takes a lot of planning. For example, try crossing your arms. Now cross your arms the other way. It feels really uncomfortable, it feels very strange. It's something that you know how to do, but it just doesn't quite feel right. For people in the early stages of dementia, they might feel uncomfortable, they might be able to still do things, but it might not feel quite right. They might have problems with coordination, such as dressing and walking, fine motor control, such as doing buttons up. Communication. Introduce yourself. Make sure that the person is listening to you before you start communicating. Minimise distractions such as noise and other things that are going on. Use clear language. You might want to reinforce with an object, so show a teacup when you're offering a drink. People with dementia often have language problems. They struggle to find the right word, or they might use the wrong word, or they might get words jumbled up in the sentence. Again, you need to listen carefully and try to understand the emotions or feelings behind the communication. Lastly, people might have a difficulty with calculation, difficulty with understanding money, amounts and also being able to tell the time and the time of day. It's important to know that people with dementia can lead an active and purposeful life and can carry on doing the things that are important to them. Things that can help with the symptoms of dementia include cognitive stimulation which might include doing puzzles, discussing current affairs, reading a magazine or reading a book. Life story work, sharing memories and experience. The person might already have a life story book. Or they might have photographs or items in their bedroom that reflects their past life or interests. It's important that people keep as active as possible as well. Physically, so getting up and moving around, joining in games and activities. Mentally active, we said reading puzzles, reading the newspaper and socially active, so being able to communicate and join in with groups. This can boost memory, can boost self-esteem and help avoid isolation and depression. There is more to a person than dementia. There are some key points to person-centred care when supporting people with dementia. Treating the person with dignity and respect. Do not make fun or ridicule their behaviours. Understand their history, their lifestyle, culture and preferences, including their likes, dislikes, hobbies and interests. They might have had an interesting career or hobby. 
My grandfather was a speed skater. He would keep his speed skates in the bedroom, so people in the residential home would ask him questions of why they were there. He was always very proud of his skills. Providing people with opportunities to have conversations and relationships with other people is also very important. Ensure that the person has an opportunity to try new things. Very often for people with dementia we try and stick to the same routine so things are familiar. But this shouldn't stop us trying out new activities and trying perhaps new foods with an individual with dementia. Thank you for listening. If you need any further information, you could go to the Alzheimer's Society website, you could speak to staff, or you could talk to the person themselves. They are the expert in how they wish to be cared for. Thank you.